Um, so instead of a summer packet, here's what, here are some options that you can follow instead of doing a summer packet over the summer, because here's the problem. A lot of times teachers will give a summer packet and it's just busy work. It's just do these problems. And it's almost like, I remember when I was a teacher, we had to like, it was almost, it was actually required that we had to provide students with some sort of work. Now, initially we used to just like gather up a whole bunch of work, right? That students were supposed to learn from that year. And then we just put it on like sheets and like say, all right, you print it out and like, here's some work you could do. And here's the problem that I always had with the summer packet is when we didn't put a lot of time and effort to it, we had to do it. So we had to provide it. There wasn't a lot of thought into the summer packet. Um, and what happened was a lot of students took it very seriously. That's why we had to provide it because parents and teachers are like, where's the summer packet? I want my kid to be doing something, which is really good. Like, especially as a teacher, you want students coming into school being like, I want to learn. Like, I want to be prepared. That's a good thing. The problem was a lot of times where the students were doing it and it was just busy work. It wasn't really making them better. They were just doing problems because that was what the teachers just created was just problems. And it was just blah, like just tons of problems. And what I noticed as a teacher from having summer packets being completed year after year is it wasn't really preparing students any better than the students that were saying like, yeah, you know what? Forget this. I'm not doing anything. Like <laughs> I'm going to show up at a first day of school and I will start school that way. Now, obviously, we always want people to be prepared or we want you to always walk into a classroom being as most prepared as possible. But I also kind of, you know, could understand the student that was coming into like, hey, it's my summer. Like, I want to enjoy my summer. And you know what? If you're just putting together problems, I mean, they might not have known this, but if you're just like throwing problems together as busy work, like, and it's not really going to benefit me, then why should I be doing this work? So as a teacher, it made me decide and made me think, you know what, I really got to put in a lot of thought and process into this. And I got to make sure there's an incentive for students to do it. And you know what, if students want to do it over the summer, awesome. If they don't want to do it over the summer, I don't want to punish them. Um, so what I did is I ended up creating what I called a rolling summer assignment. And that's what's in my, and that's what's in my course. If you want more details on that, that's down below. Um, and that'll be down below in the description. But the main thing that was for pre-calculus. The main thing though, that I want to, um, the main thing I want to convey to you about the, um, about my rolling, my rolling summer packet was I designed that summer packet to make sure that would help students be prepared for each and every chapter. So if students did this over the summer, which they can do, there is no prior knowledge that been needed except for passing the previous class. They could go ahead and complete that work or they could complete it per chapter, right? It was broken down into the chapters that we were going to cover. So therefore the students that did over the summer, they had a little bit less work. They're like, Hey, I don't have to do this now. And then the students that didn't do it over the summer, Hey, they had their fun. Then they now had to do a little bit more extra work before we got into it. And that was kind of a good mixing point for me to be able to assign a grade for a summer assignment, but not overly punish students that didn't do the work, but not overly compensate students that did do the work, right? I wanted to make sure the summer assignment was purposeful. Now, here's my problem. Not all teachers make a summer assignment that is purposeful. If your teacher does, I think it's a great idea to do the summer assignment, right? I mean, if they put in that time and effort to saying, here are the problems that I want you to do and know before entering in this class, then do it. Like, I, I think that's a really, really good way to be prepared um, for the school year. And again, hopefully, um, it's something that, you know, even if there's not a big grade attached to it, it's something that you can continuously do throughout the year. And it's not due on day one and you don't get overly punished for not having it all complete. Cause I am a big proponent of like enjoying your summer and, and not overly, you know, overly stressing about the upcoming school year and having to do a whole bunch of work. But if it's not busy work, it's work worth doing. And I like the summer assignment. This video, I want to talk about, well, what about if you don't have a summer assignment? What if, what about if your teacher's never given one? Or you know it's just some district one that been thrown together and it's just a ton of busy work. What are some things that you can do to help you prepare for the upcoming school year that in my opinion might even be better than actually a teacher assigned, um, that teacher assigned uh, summer assignment? The first one is actually just learn some different math. I think one of the important things you can do is like go back through some additional math. Um, Go back, to, go back through something that is completely different than what you're maybe working on. Like even if you can just pick up some additional skills from some, uh, sorry, the, learn the, uh, even pick up some different skills from like older math classes or something that you've never learned before. There's a power of you being able to put yourself, there's a power in you being able to think about things differently 
um, but still like going through that learning process. Okay. Because here's the thing, like learning is, is a skill, right? And what happens with learning is you got to put yourself in that uncomfortable situation of like trying to remember and, and trying to remember and challenging yourself. So even if you're like, I, I don't know what math is going to be in this course. I don't know like what I need to go be able to do. Like you can be able to still benefit by going back through some older, like way older math, not last year's, but older math courses, or maybe some additional math courses that are semi-related. Like maybe you can take like a little private course, even if it's a couple days worth of just getting yourself back into the learning mindset, because what we're doing by learning something completely different, even if it's a math or non-math related, but what you're doing is you're just getting your brain into that subset of the, uh, of how to take in that information, because sometimes it takes students a little while once school starts to really, you know, kind of get, um, to kind of get ready and get into that learning mode. And it's even a, ben a bonus if you can find something that is going to be mathematically related, hopefully, um, but also something you'll bit enjoy, right. And just kind of get yourself into that process of learning, of practicing and, um, and I think just going outside of the, of the math world can also still give you a pretty good benefit of, um, especially if you've been like, just been relaxed, you know, laying by the beach, not doing anything, um, for the whole summer, like going, go back into something. And especially even if you did like some older math, um, like an older math course or something like that, that would still be benefit you. That would still prepare you for this upcoming year and get you ready for the school year to begin. Now that doesn't really prepare you though, for like the content that's coming up for the upcoming year. Right. That's why a lot of times a thoughtful study guide can help you. What that is going to, what just learning something, just going over, taking something from either a math class or a non-math class, like, but getting yourself engaged, getting your brain engaged is helpful for the learning process. But what about if you're concerned about the content? Like, I don't know if I'm going to be prepared for this upcoming content. What I would recommend doing, and your teacher's not providing any resources, what I'd prepare to do is just go back to last year's stuff. It's the easiest, quickest way to review what you need to do to be prepared for the upcoming school year. Go back through your old homework, go back through your old quizzes, go back through your notes, go through your exams. You have a plethora of information to review. Start redoing some things, cover them up, start practicing some problems again. It doesn't matter if it's like, I'm not sure if this stuff is gonna be covered or not. Like almost all of it is good at some reason or some way, especially like if it was on a test or a quiz and you know, homework, like it was designed to prepare you to learn the information you were supposed to learn last year. And believe it or not, unless you're continually doing some work, if you're taking that mental break, which you should be doing, you probably forgot a lot of the information anyways, which is okay, right? So, but go back through every single chapter, every single homework, every single quiz, t test, you know, review the final exam, like, and just start priming your brain again with all that information, practicing some of those problems. And I guarantee you, you'll start remembering when you see them in this upcoming year, you're like, oh yeah, I remember I practiced that. Like, it's much better to, you know, have it throughout the school year, review it one more time in the summer, and then you can begin a whole, you know, brand new year with a new teacher, new teaching, um, new teaching instruction, new grading policies and stuff like that. But I think it'd be a great benefit to go back and review your older content. Now, here's the third thing. That's good for old stuff. And let's say you're like, hey, you know what? I remember everything from this year, right? I'm pretty good. Like, I don't really want to learn any like non-math or like some random math. Like, I feel pretty strong with the math content that I've already learned or previously learned, like, but I'm kind of concerned about the content that's coming up this school year. What is something that I could still do, right? Because a lot of times if your teacher has a good, you know, summer packet, they're really, really preparing you. Like they're taking some older stuff, but they're also giving you, what I would always do is pick problems that are just going to foreshadow exactly what we're going to cover in the upcoming school year. So what are some other things you could do? Well, what I would recommend is find a teacher or find some resources or find a book that's actually teaching that content now and try to learn what you can from it, right? I, you know, if you have like, uh, reading by book is not for everybody um, or learning from a book is not for everybody. But I mean, guys, there's online classes that you can take. There's online videos that you can watch, right? There's amazing instructors that are teaching classes that you're taking this common year, this upcoming year. And, what, and the reason why I would say to do that is not to say that, oh, you should just learn online and like you don't need to do it in person. No, no, no. What you wanna be able to do is you want to be able to find an alternative option to be able to understand something, right? Because when you're in a class, that teacher is your number one, right? They are, they are the person that is, you know, obviously giving you the grade, right? And the one that you're going to see the most often and communicate with. So like they should have your uh, at most attention, but let's be honest, why any of you are on the stream or know of me, 
is most likely because I have helped you once in a while or here or there with the math question, right? You uh, didn't understand something from your main teacher. And so you came online and you found maybe a video of mine. And like, I explained something that helped you get over hump, right? Now, obviously I have a ton of content online, but I'm not the best teacher for everybody. And I'm not the best teacher of all the information and for every class in the world, right? So what I want you to do is just challenge you is find alternative ways, alternative resources for you to be able to lean in, like to start, you know, start maybe like learning some of the content from a different teacher online. So therefore one, you can also get an idea of like, when you're learning something in class, you have other like resources immediately. You're already aware of them. You're not like, oh crap, I have a test tomorrow. Like who else teaches this content? No, no, go and find that content now. Like start going through some of the sections with that teacher you know, online or, you know, on their blog or website or course or whatever it may be. So therefore when school starts, you are ready and prepared and you are like, Oh, I'm not, I didn't understand what really happened. Let me go to this teacher's resource and see what they have. Right. Let me see how they explain this concept. I've already done the work. I already spent like a week watching their content and understanding their teaching. So therefore when the times get tough with my own teacher, I know where to fall back on. So I love summer packets. If you have a summer packet, I would highly recommend doing it. I put a lot of time and attention in my own summer packets and I expected my students to do them, but I also encourage them to complete them throughout the whole year if they didn't want to do them over the summer, which I get. But if you don't have a summer packet or your summer packet just seems like a whole bunch of busy work and not really worth your time, then hopefully these three, um, then hopefully these three techniques or three things Hopefully then these three resources or these three tips within this video can help you out. Have a great school year. And I can't wait. Um, hope you have a great school year. And now let's get into some of your guys' questions that you guys have.